Today, I want to talk about something called the dead internet theory. A disturbing and unsettling yet entirely plausible theory that gives me that awful sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach. The kind of feeling you get when you know someone is lying to your face. The kind of feeling you get when you connect two formerly unconnected points in your mind, and their newfound connection gives you chills because you didn't want to believe it, but the truth is too obvious to ignore now. This theory adds a deep-seated gut feeling to what many of you have experienced for years and years but have been unable to put into words. The feeling that something is deeply wrong online, but you can't put your finger on what or why. Many people seem to have pieces and fragments, but no one seems to have figured everything out. Once I explain all of this, I'm sure a lot of you are going to be feeling these exact thoughts. So I'm sorry if I break any worldviews with this video, it honestly isn't my intention. I, like so many others, just want the truth. So let's get right into the dead internet theory. Most of the internet is fake. This theory is a collection of a lot of ideas for many people, but credit must be given to Illuminati Pirate for bringing together so much of this information into a single thread. I'm going to discuss a lot of what he says, as well as pull a ton of information from a variety of sources and comments from all over the web. The simple explanation for the dead internet theory is that the vast majority of the internet is actually generated by artificial intelligence in conjunction with paid media influencers in order to manufacture consumers for an increasingly wider range of newly normalized products, as well as to dramatically sway public opinion and control the collective attitude or outlook of people or culture. For all of the younger people out there who didn't experience the internet as it used to be, the internet of today is vastly different. Before the advent of the internet-connected cell phone or the mass adoption of the home computer, before social media even existed, the internet was a place where people came to express passion, hobbies, feelings, and thoughts. It wasn't filtered or selectively shown to you based on what an algorithm thinks you want to hear. It also wasn't an echo chamber to reinforce your pre-existing beliefs, whatever they may be. It wasn't created to keep you locked into a website or an app for hours and hours every single day. The internet was a collection of human thought, both right and wrong, and what you found and enjoyed was up to you. It wasn't monetized. The point of it wasn't to get as many clicks as possible or to keep you engaged for as long as possible. It just was. The internet was whatever you made it. One doesn't realize that they're living in the wild west until that wild is taken away from them. Just as such, most of us didn't realize that the freedom of expression of the old internet that we all enjoyed would someday disappear. But here we are. Only now, in its awful absence, do we realize how bad things have gotten. Like I said earlier, a lot of people have had this sinking feeling in their gut for a while, but they didn't understand or realize why. The fact is, there is a massive and incomplete puzzle here. Some of us have a piece or two, but none of us have all the pieces, and anyone that claims otherwise, I wouldn't trust them. This incomplete puzzle connects us all, so it's in our best interest to try to find as many pieces as possible. These days, the internet feels so empty and devoid of people. Have you ever noticed that? Truly hear me out here. The internet feels devoid of content. It's safe, sterile, bland. There is nowhere to go, nothing to do, see, or read. There are no experiences anymore. It's a collection of 10 or so websites or apps that everyone visits over and over again until they go to sleep, only to do it again the next day. It's a series of empty husks. The internet seems gigantic, but it's more like a hot air balloon because there's nothing inside. The same repeated threads and pictures and similar replies reposted over and over again across the years to the point that it's unremarkable anymore. All of your friends enjoying the same funny video as you, the same talking points shared repeatedly over and over online, or how every day something new is trending, so you better jump in and give your take on it. Every day, it's something, so the conversation can never linger too long. There's always the next new or shocking or unusual thing everyone is talking about. I'm sure everyone watching this has heard of a news story that sounds like the one that they've heard a thousand times before, but this time it's new and shocking and unusual. It boggles the brain. For example, how many times have we heard something about a new type of moon only happening tonight or tomorrow? A blue moon, a blood moon, a super flower blood moon, a pink moon, a super pink moon, a hunter's moon, a snow moon. You get the point. Why does everything feel so fake and manufactured? It's always the same thing or a slightly different thing repeated over and over as if it's produced content made to distract and occupy your mind. 
Why get out there and march in the streets to demand better wages or safer working conditions after a grueling day of work when you can go home and saturate your mind on endless, mindless escapism? The new Super Glitter Moon is happening tonight, and Jimmy Kimmel just said something that is hilarious, and Dr. Seuss books are changing, aren't you mad? And have you seen the new Marvel trailer? Don't step back, don't stop to think, keep engaged, keep scrolling, keep buying, keep wasting your time. Keep pointlessly arguing with bots online made to offend you to spark unending engagement. Do you like superheroes? How about Hollywood drama? New music? The algorithm is here to feed you an endless supply of content based on what it assumes you want. Have any of you noticed how sterile fiction has become? How it caters to the lowest common denominator and follows the same template over and over again? How music is the same bland, seemingly created in a lab song over and over again? There is a reason for all of this. Algorithms and computer programs have been manufacturing content now for at least a decade that we know of. It's the Wizard of Oz mindset. Once you take a step back, and the curtain has been pulled, and you see it for what it really is, you can't go back to the way you used to think. It's like knowing Santa isn't real. No matter what you do, you can't make it real anymore. But let's go deeper into the internet side of things. Let's talk about YouTube. For the younger people watching this, YouTube used to honestly be about expressing yourself. It was random people in front of a camera talking about how they felt, or what they've experienced. It was real, it was organic, it wasn't about trends. Nowadays, if you talk about the wrong thing, your video gets demonetized. If you say the wrong thing, your video gets removed. You can speak freely as long as you're okay with being suppressed in the algorithm and no one sees your content. The views, the clicks, the growth on YouTube, it's all nonsense. I did YouTube for seven years before I got as big as I am today, and it's completely artificial. That's what blew my mind. That was the difference between me not succeeding and succeeding, was realizing that fact. It's all fake. Say the right things and push the right content and you'll succeed. You go with the way the wind is blowing. But if you stand in the face of that wind, you'll be standing there alone with 20 views. And this is not me complaining. These are objective facts. Look at almost any channel you subscribe to and take a look at their views. Individuals are being pushed away in favor of corporate news, corporate music, and safe and inoffensive content that makes money. Another creepy angle regarding YouTube and other forms of media are deepfakes. Not only can computers and AI replicate faces accurately, but now voices as well. The safest thing to assume is that the technology we see in the mainstream today was created 10 to 15 years before we ever saw it. So just imagine what AI can do now, what we won't be able to comprehend for years. It's so creepy to think about. Fake people, fake comments, fake faces, fake articles, it's terrifying. How much of the internet is actually real? People, events, news, so many things could be completely fictional. And I mean, honestly, how would we know? April 15th, 12 years ago off the sunset coast of Perth, Australia, a computer network analyst was arrested for stealing one of the most important pieces of insight and information we have today regarding all of this stuff. Upon his arrest and eight hours of interrogation, he refused to disclose where he had gotten this information from. What information did he steal? Nothing. I just made this entire scenario up. Do you see how easy it could be for an AI or a computer program to write up a plausible article like this and disseminate it? Make three or four websites push different variant versions of the BS story. Share it to Facebook, Twitter, push it out on Google and let the unknowing populace read it, believe it, and share it further until a fake story becomes a real story. How long do you think it would take for someone to realize it wasn't real? Things like this have honestly happened many times, and by the time the truth comes out, the internet has moved on to whatever the next objective is. By that future point, almost no one cares anymore, and the facts get moved off of search engines and pushed into unfindable parts of the internet. The internet of old is dead. Here's another interesting thing you yourself can witness. The internet on your smartphone is not the same as the internet on your PC. Try it out for yourself. Go to any popular website with a lot of traffic and spend a few days randomly checking the same thing from your PC and your smartphone. You'll notice from time to time that what you see on one device is completely different from the other. Entire threads can play out differently. Sometimes you'll see different comments, different like to dislike ratios on comments, all kinds of weird anomalies you'd only notice because you're coming at it from two different places. I'm sure a lot of you have experienced the case of trying to find that one comment that you really liked and never being able to find it again. Maybe it was simply deleted, 
but it's weird that so many of us have experienced that before. The argument for algorithms is that it helps us find what we want to see and caters to our likes and dislikes. That doesn't sound so bad, right? But I don't buy that for a second. Because for years and years the argument was that different algorithms for different people don't exist. It isn't real. What are you talking about? Well, years later, with overwhelming evidence to prove that algorithms do exist, now it's widely accepted as a real thing and spun as a positive. But that isn't necessarily true either. The algorithm is there to keep you engaged and hooked on websites and apps for longer, to accurately collect your likes and dislikes, and do whatever it takes to keep your eyes glued to the screen and your wallet spending money. If you linger too long on a certain thread or a video, the algorithm will recommend more like it. If you argue online, the algorithm will find and create more incendiary posts to rile you up and keep you engaged. If you didn't already know it, you are the product being manipulated and used and AI will do anything to keep you there. What is right? What is wrong? What is allowed? What is not? It's a vicious cycle that weeds out dissent and critique. Nuance isn't allowed. I don't necessarily mean from a political standpoint, although I can't completely disregard this angle. So whether you're right-leaning or left-leaning or something else, suppression is a real thing for all sides. Discussion and understanding aren't good for business. There is a small Overton window of allowed discourse, and if you stray outside of that window, everything is done to squash you or hide you away. And I don't necessarily mean just extreme points of view. Take for example, war. War is incredibly destructive and awful. So many innocent lives are lost and trillions of dollars are wasted. For what? Profits for corporations and defense contractors, and territory for the geopolitical chessboard, but nothing that directly helps you or I. But advocate against war, or try to make changes to stop war, and the entire internet will miraculously find a way to critique you, destroy you, and silence you. You are just one small voice in a sea of manipulation, money, and power. And that's not all. The AI and algorithms are used to push public opinion. World news is pushed only by a handful of specific people, carefully selected and manicured for you. For every hot button issue, there is a deliberate and more often than not manufactured angle which is going to be pushed towards you to keep you fighting rather than collectively coming together. Let's briefly talk about the recently ended conflict. The fact of the matter is that no matter what time we left that country, it was going to collapse. 10 years ago, today, or 10 years from now. This is a fact, but they don't want that to be a fact. Obviously the powers that be wanted us to stay there indefinitely because it is so lucrative. There are so many natural resources to pillage and the money made by defense contractors was so great. We gotta stay there forever. Thankfully, public opinion was against this. People were tired of it and just wanted it to end. Americans need help over here, not more endless nonsense thousands of miles away. Now, notice how the dynamic shifted when the pullout started. Every major news organization went into overdrive doing everything they could to get back in. Every news channel, every website, every major influencer on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, any person that stood out there saying, hey, this is a good thing, bring them home, was crushed by an overwhelming majority online saying the opposite. Now this is incredibly weird, considering the vast majority of Americans say the exact opposite. Stuff like this is the perfect example, because you can really see where things aren't adding up. I'm not here to argue the details of leaving. I could make an hour-long video on that, or the political angle, or any of that. If you have that deep urge to go into that, I must ask you to stay on topic. The anger and engagement and fighting is all a distraction. The point I'm making is that when there is a narrative or an angle they want, they are going to do everything to get it. It's creepy, it's weird, and it's unsettling. Let's talk more about social media. There is a reward and punishment system built in to push things in certain directions. For example, look at Reddit. I have joked for years and years that Reddit is a hive mind. Now that this theory has come along, that joke seems to be a lot less funny and a lot more realistic. Simply based upon a like or dislike ratio, Reddit can push up what it deems correct and push down what it deems incorrect. Then you have bots spamming to derail conversations on subjects they don't want discussed, and dividing and conquering on real issues to break down any progress that could be made. It's a psychological game being played on everyone. You want more upvotes, and to get them, you make sure you say the stuff that's going to get pushed up. Don't rock the boat. Follow the trends, say agreeable things, avoid disagreeable things or challenging topics. The obvious point of Reddit having a point-based system is to make the points go up. The system discourages you from saying things that will make your points go down. You only want your points to go up. Do you see the problem? 
I'm not even that much of a contrarian, but the first thing that I do when I check out an interesting Reddit thread is to sort by controversial because it feels so much more human. I want to read responses from people with different opinions, not so much to get mad or to argue with others, but to have my beliefs challenged. I find it ridiculous that I have to dig so deeply to find this kind of stuff. That's why so many places on the internet feel like echo chambers of repeated ideas and thoughts. I don't want to be reassured that I'm correct. I want to be challenged repeatedly so I can either strengthen my perspective or change it if necessary. Another social media I'd love to talk about is Twitter. What Twitter does is they place people in rooms. And you don't know what room you're in or how you got there, but you're there. You can't escape from these rooms or have a way of checking to see which room you're in or who else is in there with you. Upon learning this, you might think that the goal of these rooms is to lock you in with other people similar to you. But in fact, the goal is to generate high-intensity emotional responses, like outrage or humor. Swelling up your emotional state is more likely to get you to stay on these sites for longer, have more interactions, and allow them to collect more data on you to be sold or manipulated. By trapping us in these invisible rooms, you are more likely to see things you disagree with, but only to a certain extent. You will not have to actually face a detailed counterpoint to your argument, only a brief, incomplete summary maximized for high-intensity emotion. You see, the point of Twitter isn't to find common ground or debate the issues. It's to misinterpret and argue and get mad and waste time and energy while they collect data on you and throw ads in your face. Twitter does this by imposing an overly strict 240 character limit per tweet to make it physically impossible to discuss complex ideas in such a small space. So conversations naturally devolve into insults and shock value. There's a reason the country feels so divided right now, and it's all intentional. Look at Facebook. It's a well of content thrown at you just to rile you up and support your pre-existing beliefs. Are you mad about this? Well, here is more stuff to get mad about. Are you worried about this? Well, here are more things to worry about. Do you love cats or dogs? Aren't they great? Well, this really bad thing happened to one of them. You better stay engaged and keep watching. Your emotions don't matter at all to us. Buy the stuff, argue a bunch, and keep isolating yourself from other humans because it makes you less powerful. So how much of the internet is fake? Studies suggest that less than 60% of web traffic is human. That's right, 60%. According to researchers, some years, a healthy majority of them are mostly bots. For a period of time in 2013, the New York Times reported that half of YouTube traffic was bots masquerading as people, a portion so high that employees feared an inflection point would happen, meaning YouTube systems for detecting fraudulent traffic would begin to regard bot traffic as real and human traffic as fake. They even have a name for this hypothetical event. It's called the inversion. Remember, this was all the way back in 2013, so it's not a stretch in the slightest to assume that the threshold of bot traffic has been met and surpassed meaning that the internet is, for the most part, filled with non-living voices. It really puts it in perspective how outnumbered we are compared to bots. The vote counts on YouTube, Reddit, Instagram, it's all manipulated and distorted. Very little of it is real. For example, every single time that I upload a video, I lose around 10 subscribers. It's like clockwork. Doesn't matter what I upload or how popular it is, I lose around 10 subscribers right when I click publish. Amazingly enough, I'm not alone in this. This isn't a single glitch that just happens to me. This happens to most people with a big enough subscriber base, and I'm sure the numbers scale upward. The common prevailing theory is that it's YouTube's sly way of removing regular humans from the equation. If you're big enough and successful enough, you can weather the storm pretty easily. Losing 10 subs isn't bad when you gain thousands, but if you're a smaller YouTuber, or a YouTuber they don't really want around anymore, losing subs is an easy and subtle way to mentally break you down and eventually remove you from the equation. The push for corporate content and acceptable content is all that matters. YouTube isn't about you anymore. Just change the name already and call it Content Tube or Corporate Tube. But let's get even deeper and more disturbing. DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, is a research and development agency of the United States Department of Defense and is responsible for the development of emerging technologies for use by the military. DARPA had a program called LifeLog, and its goal was exactly that, to log one's entire life. LifeLog aimed to compile a massive electronic database of every activity and relationship a person engages in. This was to include credit card purchases, websites visited, the content of telephone calls and emails sent and received, faxes, postal mail sent and received, instant messages sent and received, books and magazines read, 
television viewing habits and radio selections, physical locations recorded by wearable GPS sensors, and even biomedical data captured through wearable sensors. The point of collecting all of this data on everyone was to identify preferences, plans, goals, and markers of intentionality. Another of DARPA's goals for LifeLog had a predictive function. It sought to, quote, find meaningful patterns in the timeline to infer the user's routines, habits, and relationships with other people, organizations, places, and objects, and to exploit these patterns to ease its task. Sounds absolutely terrifying, correct? Well, lucky for us, it was shut down February 4th, 2004, over criticism from civil libertarians concerning the privacy implications of such a system. Interestingly, though, on that exact same day, February 4th, 2004, a small and little-known website at the time launched called Facebook. No, I'm not joking. Not in the slightest. The exact same day that they shut down LifeLog, Facebook started. Lucky for us though, back in 2020, on Twitter, the official DARPA account came out to reassure people that LifeLog and Facebook have absolutely nothing to do with each other. Even though certain employees of LifeLog went to work at Facebook, it's nothing to worry about. Right. Once you learn all that, it makes you look back at all those news stories that you heard over the years of Facebook selling user information to other companies, and uh, all this stuff seems pretty obvious now. We've been played, ladies and gentlemen. Then you had those NSA leaks years ago that the government was in fact spying on all of us. And when you add up all these pieces, it's easy to see that this is a massive puzzle and we simply don't have all the pieces. There's a lot more information in the post by Illuminati Pirate and I highly recommend anyone go check that out if you wanna dig deeper into this topic. I'm gonna to have a link in the description. The conclusion that he draws is essentially this. The US government is engaging in an artificial intelligence powered gaslighting of the entire world population. Now, whether you agree with this, or disagree, or accept some parts or deny other parts, you can't say this isn't a fascinating theory. It's a positive feedback loop, a stick and carrot approach. Say and do the right thing, get rewarded. Say and do the wrong thing, get artificially suppressed. This way the narrative can be strung along in whatever way a corporation or government pleases. Why debate and discuss ideas and plan for progress when we can instead yell about stupid pointless culture war nonsense? Just think about it, the internet is the fastest way to retrieve, absorb, and share information. Of course it was going to eventually be manipulated and contorted into what it is today. Nowadays everyone is too cowardly to have an opinion that clashes with what is deemed acceptable within the Overton window. Artificial trends created by who knows what drive the daily narrative. Then we get drawn into that by an overwhelming human obsession with being a part of the conversation. If you're not a part of it, you feel left out. And if you play it safe and you go with the flow, well, you feel validated and a part of something. It's human psychology and sociology used against us. In this way, the internet and social media, which was supposed to democratize media by allowing users to create whatever content they wanted, has instead been hijacked by the powerful. What was meant to be a communal space for growth and knowledge has turned into a battleground of the ignorant and uninformed, endlessly attacking each other over pointless convictions. The advantage that bots have over us is that they can create an opinion and repeat it and support it over and over again. They are faster than us, there are more of them than us, not to mention the positive feedback given to them and us for repeating their arguments. Think about it. We can't convince them to change their minds because they don't have minds. They are programmed to behave a certain way and do a certain goal. They are a monolith with a focused goal. We are fractured humans with minds that can oftentimes be changed. If nine out of 10 people say that you're wrong, most people can't handle that kind of pressure. So they cave in and they join the other nine. This is human nature. It's nothing to be ashamed of, but it is being used against us. Most people don't want to be the odd one out or the person that rocks the boat. This is what the dead internet is today. A brand new big budget movie releases and all you hear is nonstop praise. Never ending unbelievable praise and worship for such a great masterpiece. It's weird. It's really weird. Obviously, the first thought you have isn't going to be, bots and paid influencers are pushing a narrative to sell movie tickets. So you go and see it. It was fine. Nothing extraordinary. But here's the thing. Are you going to speak your mind and disagree with the collective? They said it's incredible. And you thought it was just okay. Are you wrong? Is it possible that so many other people are wrong and you just happen to be the one that's right? Do you see where I'm going with this? The internet today isn't at all what it used to be. So who is to blame? Is it us? Is it Google? 
Is it Facebook? The government? Politicians? Honestly, it's everyone. We got so preoccupied with life and small gradual improvements to that life, we didn't see what was happening. It was a small fire that started in the basement, and we just didn't notice it. And now the house is completely burnt down. So what can we do? I suppose the first way to do this is to spread awareness of this. Next, you can pull yourself and your content off Facebook and other social media. Extremely limit the amount of information you share with these companies is also important. Another thing that everyone could start doing for once is demanding bought and paid for politicians on both sides do better. Turning your phone off, unplugging your Echoes and Alexas, and getting away from everything would help. Imagine one day of no one using any of this stuff. The effect would be unbelievable. Lastly, we need to recognize that the internet isn't real life. We are all so tightly wound in our separate rooms that we have failed to recognize it isn't real. It's a distraction to keep you all separated and anxious. So pull the plug as much as possible. The fact is, we are all in this together. We are all humans who desire a better life, be it American or otherwise. We are all humans with brains and hearts and feelings and emotions. We want a better life for ourselves, for our children, and for the future. They are gaslighting us and manipulating us to fight with each other over the stupidest stuff. My main objective with this video is first and foremost explain the dead internet theory, but secondly to reinforce the idea that even if we disagree with each other over certain things, we need to realize that 99% of that noise is a distraction. We can overcome small differences. Everything doesn't have to be a fight. Everything isn't a life or death struggle like frauds on the internet try to make it out to be. We don't need to separate and segregate ourselves into smaller and smaller groups just to infight. The more we do that, the less power we all have. If we want to change things, we have to realize that we are all in this together, and the further we grow apart from one another, the chance of us coming together for positive change gets smaller and smaller, and they win. So tell me, what do you think about the dead internet theory? Is this something you could see yourself believing, or is it too far out there for you to accept? There's a pretty powerful impulse in all of us that when we hear something huge that could change our view on everything, we reject it to protect ourselves. This is natural and normal. Humans aren't meant to have their entire existence blown up. No one wants to have their entire worldview, which they've built a life upon, crumble before their very eyes. It's intense, it's strange, but I challenge you to face it bravely. Personally, I find this fascinating, but honestly, a little frightening. The first time I read it, it gave me chills. But then again, every spooky mystery kind of gives off that vibe. So I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into something new, and if you did enjoy it, I hope that you will continue to support my efforts to entertain you going forward. If you like this and you think my work is worth supporting, head on over to Patreon and throw me a few bucks there, link in the description. The last time I made a video on a weird topic like this, it got demonetized and pulled down, so any help is appreciated. Also, if you subscribe to my Patreon, you'll get early access to all videos just like this one, as well as exclusive videos that only they get to watch. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me hear all of your thoughts below. And until next time, never stop searching.